My name's Beth, I am the dyer at Telling Yarns and I just thought I would come here and show you a bit of what I'm knitting up in our yarn and show you some of the new colourways we've got um, and some great ideas in terms of patterns of what we're using our yarn for. So um, my works in progress, I have two today, are um, I've got Knit Love Wool by Jen Steingrass her meadow moon so here's the picture you will you will notice mine's quite different so i have used the fantastic pattern by jen steingarth such a nice fit from the moment you start knitting it you can just tell it's a perfect fit but um i rather naughtily changed the um the table the chart the yoke chart i changed it um quite drastically because i had an idea when i was watching his dark materials on uh the bbc i had an idea that i wanted a sort of kind of steampunk idea of uh the hot air balloons um and i did a, a jumper which maybe i'll show you on another um little video with other people's yarn which was uh the spin cycle yarn that changes color throughout in a sport weight um, and some Madeleine Tosh in a sort of light speckled in a creamy colour um, with this and then I had buildings at the bottom with the idea of the sort of um, you know the Oxford um, buildings like the cathedrals and everything that they have in his dark materials at the beginning because um, I love the books and the programme was fantastic so I paired it back because that jumper came out really well. I loved it. I loved the bottom of the sleeves. I'll show you in a separate video, but it was very busy down the bottom and the buildings where I put the windows in, it made it um, quite vertically blocky. So before blocking, it was very, very zigzag uh, in actual texture, you know, not lying flat. Once I've blocked it, obviously it lays really nice and smooth, um, but I still feel it just didn't work quite right. And I loved the snow from that pattern, which is these uh, double stitches. So it's sort of one stitch every four in the contrasting color, and then do that twice with a, a, a blank row in between. Um, and what I decided to do was I dyed up some Lyra Silvertongue, which is a very light, uh, it's almost white, but it's actually a very light gray with uh, double dipped in yellow and blue. So you get these hits of uh, sort of turquoise, yellow, green, blue coming through. So you will knit in a very light, very light gray for maybe 15 20 stitches and then suddenly you just get bright yellow bright blue bright green i just loved knitting with it where you can see stitches like that in that color i just loved that so i knitted that in the top so I, this is the lyra silver tongue uh, knitted that you can see it better um, on one of my earlier Instagram photos or on my website very light with shots of color you can see that there hopefully and then the contrast color was not really very contrasty this is Pantalaemon so Lyra's sort of spirit demon uh, it's predominantly brown and then just single dip the skein into a bluey purpley colour. So you get sort of purple indigo, very, very light turquoise going into uh, almost white before the brown comes back in again. So that gives you, can you see the pattern there with the browns and the purples? Um, that is all pantalamum. And it actually flows nicely down the top. I think this is probably the better side to show you. Down. So same colour as the contrast throughout. Yet you've got the blues here and then dropping down into brown and then back into blue and back into brown. And that's all just the same, the same single skein. 
Then what I did was, as you can see, there's a fade. So I did a fade, uh, a, a plain fade, just one that sort of came to mind to me. But since having looked at um, the Spectre pattern by um, Hohi um, Locatelli, I've noticed that it's actually the same way that she does her fades. Uh, her fades, sorry. So I faded down into Lyra Balacqua. So it has exactly the same colours in it for the double dip on either end of the skein. Same colour palette, exactly, but with a much, much darker grey, which is actually almost this sort of denim, washed denim colour. So you still get these shots of beautiful colour coming through, but it is predominantly much darker. And I, I held them double throughout the, the pattern. So up at the top, I held Lyra Balacqua with Lyra Silver Tongue, so you get this mild effect. Then dropped uh, in a slight fade into double Lyra Silver Tongue, held double. I held Pantalane and double as well, so I suppose that's mild the contrasting mix a little bit. And then I did in the fade, I actually, because I was holding double, I was able to hold. Uh, all Lyra Silver Tongue, then hold a, a mixture of the two with the Lyra Balacqua and the Lyra Silver Tongue, and then kind of fade back out. So I was just holding double in Lyra Balacqua. Um, I'm going to put the ribbing on. It's uh, a one by one, I think it is. I need to check the pattern rib. And then I'm just going to do the short sleeve version of the pattern. Um, so it should sort of stop there. I wanted it to be a crop, but a long enough crop that you could wear it with high jeans without having that sort of belly bit that shows through between the two because as a mother of three I wasn't sure if I needed my belly on show on a regular basis so um, I didn't show you the Lyra Balacqua that's this one here so you can see it's the same shades as the Lyra Silver Tongue but it's on the much darker base sort of denimy bluey grey so that's that one. Uh, brilliant pattern by Knit Love Wool. Love it. And I will happily be making the actual, <laughs> the actual sweater, how she actually wants you to do it. I just had to do that little offbeat one because I was so taken by His Dark Materials and I wanted it for the His Dark Materials yarns. Um, so my next work in progress, I have been loving this pattern, absolutely loving it is the, let me find the pattern so I see the right stuff. It's the Mount Pleasant by Pip and Pin. Um, it's a really, really, really nice little crop by Megan Nodecker. I hope I've pronounced that right. Um, so I've been doing mine in our Oscar Calavera Lobo, so it's a, a light grey, that's it in a, the cake, here it is on the, the skein. Um, a, a light grey, very light grey, dyed over um, magenta, yellow and, if I can get it, blue, yeah there you go, blue, um, quite heavy speckles, almost splatters. And it comes out so nicely. It's given a lovely kind of ice cream pop. Sorry, I've got my yarn cake wrapped around my knitting. So, didn't just pull my stitches off, did I? No. So you can see if I can straighten it out. I've just just broken for the front. So this is the front here. Um, it's got the the lace detail at the bottom which was so enjoyable to knit, really enjoyable to knit. Obviously it needs blocking because it's curling up, but I, I felt like it really showed off the um, pattern in the wool because you get those pops like this pink here. I really, really like that. And then um, you can see you've got pops of pink, yellow and blue throughout. It's really just the odd blue stitch with sort of, shading of pink and yellow. This skein I actually took for myself to knit from because it came out a bit dark. So if you can see the striping here in the grey colour, that doesn't actually happen with Oscar Calavera Lobo. 
that's not in there. It's all this lighter grey in the background, so you don't have this darker bit. That was uh, just a bit of a mishap, so I took that one for myself because I didn't want it to go into the shop as it's not actually true to the colourway. Um, so it wouldn't normally have those stripes that you can see in the dark grey. So yeah, that's that. That's the back there. Just love the lace on the bottom. Um, so I don't think that should take too much longer. That's maybe taken a week to do. So not too much longer on that one. So that's Pip and Pin. Absolutely love them. Pip and Pin. Uh, Megan does a, a great podcast, which I really enjoy as well. So I'd recommend that. Um, and then next pattern, my dream, dream works. What's coming next is the Spectre. Um, so I am actually dying up specifically for this pattern. Um, the pattern calls for four different fade, you know, a fade, fading set of four different colours. Um, but I'm actually going to, I think, probably try and go for maybe six or seven, by the way. Uh, I've seen a number of these done by other people and I've noticed that if it's too much of a change between the bottom colour and the top, it doesn't fade as nicely as Hohees has done here. So I thought if I go for more of a mix of different skeins of different colourways, then hopefully I can get this amazing subtle fade that Hohees got because she's so clever. So I'm really looking forward to doing that one. Um, I have a couple of new colourways, well, newish ones that have gone into the shop that I wanted to show you. So one of my favourites is this. This is Luna. This is part of the Hogwarts series. Um, and this is on a four ply with uh, Silver Sparkle. Um, and that is Merino Superwash, 70%. Um, Tussa Silk, 20%, and then the Stellina for the Silver Sparkle. So you can see, I love that bit there, where you've got the, the purples and the blues against the sort of rich, peachy colour there. So hopefully you're getting, that's very true to colour what's coming up on there. So that's Luna. And um, this is a, a fingering weight, so it could be knitted on its own. I, I quite like fingering weight on its own because it's a jumper that's not too thick. Because otherwise, you know, you have it on and then you go inside somewhere and boil. Um, so that's fingering, so you could hold it double or knit on your own for something more spring autumn. I should have said also, also the uh, Oscar Calavera Lobo. That's 80% uh, merino wash, uh, super wash, and 20% bamboo. So it's got a real nice shine on it. Um, and it's it's really, really soft and smooth to knit in, really soft and smooth. So it just flows over your hands and you don't get tired when you're trying to knit a whole top in a week like I've been trying to do. Um, so I've also got um, Albus. You'll notice a bit of a theme here for those who are Harry Potter fans. So this is based on, obviously, Albus Dumbledore. Um, in the actually obviously the book for the character but in terms of colourway it's actually based on the costume of Albus Dumbledore in the later films you know that really soft uh, grey just off grey sort of purple muted silk robe that he wears um, it captures that on almost the full skein in fact I'll show you it um, except for a shot, one end. Let's just lay this out back inside the loop. So yeah, you can see predominantly that light grey that I showed you. Um, and this is on a, a sparkle base as well. So it's kind of capturing somewhere between his long white beard with the flecks of sort of blondy white. And then it goes through and then you know that cap he wears with the uh, all the purples and greens really antique colors um so it's capturing all of those but it's just predominantly this bit 
with that mainly the grey. So it'd just be sort of flex through the knitting, you know, not not half as uh, regular colour pop wise as that. Just flex here and there, quite subtle. Um, and that's actually I don't not do a lot on Blue Face Leicester, but this is uh, Blue Face Leicester Superwash um, with silk and um, Stellina in silver Stellina. So yeah, I, love, I really love that one, and it's very very soft, very soft. Mm, smells lovely as well. Um, then I've got Minerva, and this one is my mum's favourite one. <laughs> So it's a, a slightly chunkier yarn. Uh, this is on lace weight, by the way. I've got it with the Stellina and without. Um, and this one is more of a sport weight. You know, it's marketed as fingering when you buy it from the yarn producers, but it's actually, when you look at the numbers, it's more of a sport weight. Uh, definitely heavier to knit with. Um, and it's got a really bouncy, silky feel to it. Um, and it's all the kind of colours, if you think, tartan, heather, um, you've got all those kind of colours of the uh, Scottish grouse. Think, you know, Highland weekend in a gorgeous Highland house with time out, you know, fishing or whatever it is that you want to do. Mainly sitting, having tea and cake, I would imagine, for me. Um, so that's a really nice one and that one's much more of a variegated one so the colour is really variegated all throughout um, all throughout on that one and then the last uh, newish edition I've got here is Sirius and um, this is based on again actually the costuming of Sirius in um, probably like Order of the Phoenix where you see his gorgeous velvets and sort of corduroys in that very old school English gentleman I think smoking club old heritage that kind of thing um, so you've got the deep deep burgundies uh, deep blues uh, sort of inky indigo here um, and then that really really gorgeous teal one of my favorite colors there so this again is like uh, Minerva it's there's an element of uh, sort of more general variegation rather than um, Albus so I'd say you know you've got full variegation in these three so you're going to have a fully variegated knit um, I'll show you something knitted in those in another one uh, another video then you've got more of the pops of colour but regularly throughout your knitting with uh, Oscar Calavera Lobo so you know the regular pops of colour then you've got um, Albus and I do another one Narcissa where you've really just got the odd sort of 12 stitches in a whole row which catches the colour um, so you should get one stitch of each colour. So that's a lovely one um, if you want a more subtle effect. Uh, a couple of other things I've been knitting with is Anne Shirley. I don't know who will recognise the namesake for that one. So this is really, really variegated. There's a photo of it um, in a little swatch on the Instagram. You can see even just in the... If I hold it, even just... Right, just on the um, actual yarn string there, you can see all the different colours in it. Um, so that's a really, you know, really, really patterned yarn, that one. Um, what I like to call my splattered yarns. Um, so those are the main ones we've got in the store at the moment, the ones that haven't sold out. Um, I've also been purchasing, I've been watching the Virtual Yorkshire Yarn Fest, which has been fantastic. Um, Sophie at Botanical Yarns organises that and she does such a great job. Um, we'll actually be on there on the October episode, which is October 31st, Halloween. So I'm sure I'll have to dye up some special colourways for Halloween. But off the back of that, I first saw um, the Fibre Fox on there um, and I decided to get this uh, flax, which I love with the 
deep sort of spring colours. So I got a couple of merino singles in flax. Oh yeah, I should say as well, Sirius is on the merino single. So it gives you, I chose that because of the sort of luxurious level of it. So it gives you that really luxurious sort of velvety look. Um, so yeah, I got a couple of flax singles. I don't know what I'm going to do with one of, with them yet. I've caked one of them up um, and the other one's still in the skein. I haven't decided what to do yet. I also got from her um, a ball of sock yarn, Hermione, which I think I probably will do the Hermione's everyday sock pattern in because I'm imagining this is going to self-stripe to a degree because it's uh, half burgundy, half gold with a, a slight meshing of maybe a peachy colour um, in between the two so I think you'd get a fairly good self-stripe with that one. Um, so that was the Fibre Fox um, and Beehive Yarns I love. Um, I got some Surrey Alpaca and Mulberry Silk blend. It's just a 50 gram skein because um, obviously it's a bit more precious this gorgeous fluff isn't it? Um, it and it, this is her Sweet Magnolia Colourway, um, and I got this from Virtual Yorkshire Yarn Fest as well. After watching her on there, she's fantastic. I would recommend you watch her videos. Um, so that's, I don't know, maybe, maybe we will do something with the two of those together. Who knows? Um, maybe a shawl or something. So, yeah, those are those. And I also ordered from the Wool Kitchen. Um, Helen's one of my favourite dyers at the Wool Kitchen. Um, so, I have one of her zips. I think I ordered the Rouge. So it's a really, really dark burgundy on all but a tiny bit, which is multicolored, and you get these things she calls zips. Uh, so you stitch for ages in your main color, the burgundy, and then you get this rainbow of like eight stitches. Um, so I'm looking forward to that arriving soon. I think she dispatched it on Friday. Um, we've got some minis coming uh, anytime this weekend. So I'll be dying those up. I'm actually going to do a Hogwarts series. So I did a few, you know, these ones are named after uh, the characters and sort of based on their, particularly their costumes. You know, this Luna is based on the um, Spectre Specs, is it, that she wears? Um, so my son Felix, who's seven, has a Luna doll and he adores Luna. And it has the blues and the pinks and then the dirty blonde of her hair. Um, and all the, the different colours that she wears. So that's based on that. But I'm actually going to do a series based on, um, you know, the illustrated books where Jim Kay illustrates them. I just love those. And me and the kids have been reading Harry Potter and listening to Steve from Fry over the lockdown period, which has been lovely because I'm a big Harry Potter fan and my kids have never been into it. So I finally got them to watch the films, finally. And now we're listening to Stephen Fry because apparently he reads it much better than I do because he has all the different voices for everybody and I only have one voice. So <laughs> we've been listening to that, but we've got the illustrated books. It seems silly that we're not reading them, but we're not. We've got the illustrated books. So I'm planning a series on the um, pictures from those books. We've got one to four. Um, so I, I, I might dip in and out of all of them or I might focus just on the first one and then move on to the second and go through like that. Um, but I was thinking, do it as a series, they'll be available to buy on the shop, but I'm also going to do it as a club. So uh, if you join the club, three months or six months, you'll get them ahead, a month ahead of everybody else. Uh, you'll get a slight discount um, and you'll have the opportunity to purchase um, any that have already come out in the Hogwarts series, like the Luna and Sirius and things, um, in a, a bundle for slightly less as part, being part of a club member. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be setting that up and, and dyeing those up. So let me know if you're interested in get, being a part of that club. So yeah, that's pretty much everything for today. Um, I am hoping to finish off my Mount Pleasant tea probably next week. I am, what, maybe a day's worth of knitting, if that, away from finishing this not at all the, <laughs> I can't really call it the uh, meadow moon because it doesn't follow the chart. But it is a meadow moon because it's her beautiful fit. And uh, I actually knitted the original version um, on the Andrea Maori, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, with all the dots, the shifty 
uh, that everybody absolutely loves. I knitted it on that pattern and I found, I don't know whether it's me or whether it's because I hadn't blocked it. Uh, I feel like now I've blocked it having resolved the neckline. So I felt that the pattern when I knitted it up was way too high in the neck and I got a bulge here. Um, so I don't know whether that's me, my fit or my tension um, or my choice of wool. We, you know, the wool, because I use the Madeleine Tosh, which is a merino single with the um, with the spin cycle, which is a sport weight. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what the issue was, but I found the neckline was not right at all for me. So I ended up pulling it out and taking it down much lower into like a scoop neckline. Um, and when I've blocked it out, actually, the neckline's quite wide. So maybe... It would have been fine if I've just was blocked it, but that's that's why I decided to go for a different base pattern for this. Uh, this isn't a pattern. I'm not a pattern designer at all. It's absolutely uh, Jen Steingass's, um, you know, garment. I just the creative side of me has to fiddle about with stitches sometimes and get my things out there because I want to wear them. So I, I might be gifting this. I think maybe to my sister. We'll see. See how much I love it when I'm done. But anyway, yeah, I'm hoping to finish those both off, probably before I record again. Um, and we'll have some of the new Hogwarts series to show you as well. Um, yeah, and then look out for us preparing for the October Yorkshire virtual Yorkshire Yarn Fest. Okay, great. Well, take care, everybody. I hope the sunshine comes back to you. We've had rain today, despite the fact that we had a an outdoor only socially distanced barbecue planned for um, my husband's brother so we had to postpone to tomorrow for a windy outside socially distanced barbecue instead but anyway i i hope that you're all staying safe and uh, enjoying